Today's lesson is on adding or subtracting rational expressions. As with numerical fractions, you must have common denominators. Add or subtract the numerators, then place the result over the common denominator. So as you can see, these two fractions have a common denominator. We just add the numerators and use that common denominator. Don't try to do C plus C is 2C or anything like that. Just use the C. And the same with subtraction. For example one, we already have common denominators. So we're going to add the numerators and get 7 over 21X. You cannot leave the answer like that. You must reduce. And we know that 7 over 21 is 1 third. But let's remember what you're really doing is factoring the denominator. And then we're canceling all common factors. When there's nothing left on top, that's not a 0. That's just a 1. And so that would be our final answer. Example two. Here, we already have common denominators. So we're going to take this and combine them. So we get 4x minus x. But be careful that you distribute the negative sign. That's one thing you have to watch out for with subtraction. And now we're going to combine like terms. Usually I have students say, Miss Adams, Miss Adams, should I factor the numerator? The directions say subtract. We've subtracted. There's no common factors. If we did factor, it would be 3 times x minus 1. None of that's going to cancel with the denominator. So there's no need to do that. And with this process, you're, you're likely um, not going to find any common factors. Alrighty, let's look at example 3. Here, we do not have common denominators. So I'm going to show you my process for getting the denominators to be common. So first of all, both of these denominators are fully factored. If they weren't factored, I'd factor them out first. And we'll see that in a later example. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to spread my fractions out a little bit, give myself some room, and I like to rewrite the fractions, but I like to spread them out. So now for my common denominator, I'm just going to do 5x times x minus 1. So notice I'm just using both. Okay, and I like to use lots and lots of parentheses. So now I compare this denominator to this entire denominator. And I say, what am I missing? Well, I'm missing an x minus one. And whatever I do, I have to do it to top and bottom. And notice anything over itself equals one. So all I've done is multiplied by one, thus not changing the value. Now I ask myself, when I compare this denominator to the new common denominator, what am I missing? Well, I'm missing 5x on the top and bottom. Okay, so that's what I do. And now, if you look, all the denominators match. Thus, I have my common denominator. So now I'm going to proceed by adding the numerators, being careful to distribute when necessary. So I have 4x minus 4 plus 5x squared. So now I simply need to simplify. That's cute. Simply simplify. <laughs> so starting with the highest, I'm going to start with the 5x squared 
plus 4x minus 4. And it's already simplified. I didn't even have to combine like terms. Now for the denominator, I always have someone say, Miss Adams, Miss Adams, do I multiply that back together? If you feel like doing extra work is usually my reply. But no, you absolutely do not have to and probably shouldn't even waste time. Okay, moving right along. Hmm. Okay, this one says subtract, and we ooh, need to factor this denominator right here. Oh, and this one as well. With subtraction, I like to start off by distributing that negative sign. And once you do that, you can turn that into addition and you're fine. Okay, let's go ahead and factor. So that gives me two and negative three, negative one, negative two. So again, remember, I like to really spread out. So I have lots of room. So this factors to X minus one, X minus two. I like to put everything in parentheses, these little binomials. Again, spacing out. I've changed that to addition. And I have negative x plus 1. And this denominator is going to be 2 times x minus 2. I just factored out the GCF. Now it's easier for me to see what my common denominator is going to be. Here I have an x minus 1, I have an x minus 2, and I have a 2. So for my common denominator, I'm going to write everything one time. Although there's an x minus 2 on both, I only need to write that one time. So now I'm going to go over here and I'm going to say, okay, what am I missing from this denominator that I have down here? So I'm missing a 2. So I'm going to do a 2 on the top and bottom. And now I have all three parts represented. And when I look at the second fraction, I'm missing an x minus 1. But remember, you do that on the top and bottom bottom. So I'm ready. So now I'm going to distribute and I get 10x minus 2 plus, and be careful over here, first gives me a negative x squared, outer, let's see that's negative negative, so that's going to be a positive 1x Inner gives me another positive 1x. And last, positive 1 times negative 1 is a negative 1. Alrighty, so now I do need to combine. And I see I have a negative x squared. Let's see, that's 10, 11, 12 x's. And let's see, that's a negative 2 and a negative 1 looks like negative 3. And write my common denominator. As long as you're good at factoring, um, you'll be in pretty good shape for this.